uh, we got stuff to talk about. We're video games. Matt's wearing <laughs> skinny. Matt's wearing skinny on. jeans today. So yeah, you know, a little bit restrictive. Welcome back, everybody, uh, to what is supposedly is the Overwatch League, but it's really like five guys getting paid to just talk absolute nonsense. We've been doing it for years, actually, uh, right under your noses. It's been quite enjoyable. Uh, New York versus Atlanta Rain, a real red versus blue uh, showdown here, Matthew. New York, I think, at, at this point, they're running out of opportunities to actually sort of start to sneak into play in contention, right? There's a general, yep. there's a genuine risk here of them not being able to even be a factor in the postseason. Uh, th this would be a huge win to get, though, against an Atlanta ta Rain team who, uh, when we saw the support play was really strong for them from, like, Ultraviolet and Vigilante. Uh, if you can get a win here against a team like the Atlanta Reign, you know, a team high up in the standings or, well, higher up than you, relativity, uh, it, it would be awesome for New York, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. I think also we've seen them rotate their backline quite a lot, right? I think now we're starting to see a little bit of what they showed in the Junku Goats meta because New York were a team that when it came to maps like Gibraltar or wherever it was actually possible, they would bring Hoan in and actually play like a, an Ana Zen setup Right. to try and counter it, right? It's even the Florida Mayhem dabbled with that. New York definitely tried to take it a bit further. So now we get to see an extension of that uh, in an environment where it's actually a little bit more viable. But again, the question remains over the heads of Yaki and Flora. You've got two players who at times try and put the whole darn thing on their back and just carry. It's like it's like the Harfoots trying to migrate, you know, if you're watching Rings of Power. I like just throw every, everything on Yaki's back and just go with it. This should be a good time for Yaki, obviously, again, to demonstrate his Tracer prowess, but you know, we've seen a lot of frustration from this team this year as they've looked to find their stride. I'd say right now, Kellen, someone who can pick up the Winston and the ball, which is really his bread and butter, should be an opportunity for New York to look much better than they have so far. And we did see some good stuff uh, from the NYXL, right, against uh, the Toronto Defiant. So uh, it'll be interesting this series. One thing that the Atlanta Reign had in their last uh, one that we casted where Venom and Speedily, they had this really nice, like, uh, Tracer Echo combination. Yep. Uh, and that'll be the lineup they have starting here today. So uh, if you remember back to the series we casted, they won the first two maps. I believe Venom and Speedily both played in those, and then they made some subs here and there. Uh, and then we ended up in the game five. They brought them back in, were able to close it out, uh, where I think you'll probably see them play some of that Tracer Echo with Hawk, you know, kind of flexing, whether it's between the Arisa, the Diva, the Zarya, can really kind of handle everything. So one of the biggest winners, actually, of this sort of metagame in terms of supports alongside Krillin is Vigilante. Seeing him uh, on the Zenyatta, having huge impact. I'm pretty sure we gave him player of the match last time around because his we combination did. with Ultraviolet was huge. You know, hard-fought match against the Defiant. This Atlanta Rain team probably finding themselves in as close to an ideal meta as possible now, especially to get value out of a lot of the young guns in Vigilante, that, that most recent addition. And we, we watched Paraiso, right? It's a great example of how this team is able to use Hawks' flexibility and their interchangeability in terms of DPS players. Because don't forget, that's a series where we got to see Nero and we got to see Kai. The Atlanta Rain making extensive use of their four DPS players, but really, ex really wanting Hawk to be very flexible to be able to do it all on the tank roll. And if you're Atlanta, I think winning this series obviously kind of keeps you afloat. I think that there's a lot of teams around the 10 and 10, you know, 11 and 9 potentially uh, area, depending on league points, probably some separation there, but a lot of teams are kind of coalescing around that area. Uh, in terms of record, uh, you can put away a team in New York, which although 4 and 15 uh, looks to potentially be playing a little bit better this stage, uh, try to add some separation, thinking that New York maybe will actually win some games later on this tournament. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta are thinking, you know, about teams like, uh, you know, the outlaws that really sit around the same substrata as them Toronto. right now. Teams like the Defiant, right, always yeah. a bit of an issue. Even like the Justice as well, the kind of team that can bother them. London are right around this like 11 and 8, 12 and sort of 9 region. So Lena gets a win here. They they stay amongst the pack, like the Peloton, so to speak. Uh, they'd love to try and break free of that, but save that sort of burst of impetus for the right time, which would definitely be play-ins, playoffs. So for now, Atlanta want to come out here strong. I think... You know, we're again looking to see how effective Speedly can be on this Echo. The Tracer setups look quite good for Atlanta so far. It was pretty effective when we saw it, the Echo Tracer. They'll have the Diva in play this time to give a little bit more extra uh, help for the supports in the back with the Defense Matrix. And New York, they'll actually play the Wrecking Ball here. So yeah. uh, can this be effective against this Echo composition? Yeah, again, you know, when Kellen got brought over from O2 Blast, most of his success came from a meta where he sort of played the balls like it was like Briggs and Wrecking Ball a lot of the time. So 
We'll see what he can get done here. We've seen a few teams try it, right? San Francisco defaulting to it. They must have a lot of belief that it's like a, you know, a really effective uh, comp in general. Oh, the flight cooldown comes up just in time for Speedly there. Yeah, and you see he gets hacked, but Hawk there with the defense matrix. Nothing to help the supports here. For NYXL in the back. Oh, 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 oh. Floor comes out of the translocator, able to take him out. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe Speedly doesn't see the translocator or, or chooses or thinks he can sort of exploit the fact that the Sombra's going to pop up there, man. I'm not really sure, but uh, either way, Atlanta are capping now behind some of this commotion, but there'll be some contest here from New York, and it's been a really messy first few moments. Yes, Yaki was able to pick up a few kills there, and same with Flora before he gets taken out by Hawks. So that prevents the Atlanta rain from actually capping this point. So uh, Yaki and Kellen have been here to contest. Yaki with a pulse bomb now. Venom has one of his own. Support ultimate slowly ticking out. Not a lot of opportunity to get a ton of healing. And a lot of back and forth. Players getting blown out in individual 1v1s, 1v2s. And like Yaki's looking for Ultraviolet right now. Venom hacked at the moment, but he's able to shrug it off. And that's the pulse. It's a good connect on Gangnam Jin. Ultraviolet deals with Kellen as well. And Yaki, we saw him hunting an Ana earlier, Matt. But he looks like he wasn't able to find that target at all. He gets brought down by Vigilante, who again is staving off dive DPS. And Flora ends up using the EMP here, like, really late at the end of the fight. And they're not able to get, like, a pick to maybe think they can, like, stagger a little bit. But not a great start for New York. I mean, Kellen dropping there is extremely bad. You can see where that happened. Vigilante able to get involved at longer range. Everyone's pushed up here for the rain. You can also see just a huge difference between when having the Divin play, right? Where now they get a hack and there's the defense matrix there able to help out the supports versus when we see from Atlanta's perspective when they're you know trying to make a play for Gangnam Jin or Ho-Wan. It's pretty easy. Speedly got nanoed here. But everyone in New York playing so far back that it's unlikely he's going to get any value here. Kellen, some free damage for Speedly here. Duplicate is online. Kellen would just be a nuisance. Contest, maybe try and put some pressure down on Hawk. Dealing with the Transcendence now. Self-destruct here to force New York back. Mad! What? Uh, Ho-1 oh, goes down what? to that self-destruct? You can't let that happen here! Uh, how? I mean, it was up on the high ground. Maybe he was body blocked and we just didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's quite unfortunate. It's ever since this first fight, uh, it's really been like Kellen and Yaki going around and getting behind Atlanta, but nothing they can do with it is uh, this will be Flora getting Ultraviolet. So they've been putting a lot of pressure on Ultraviolet. He's been able to live for uh, a while on his own, but that time they're able to get him. Minefield placed on New York's side of the map, so maybe just to allow them to advance and have a chance of contesting the point. Kellen gets rid of Vigilante here, so able to follow up and deal with the last remaining backliner for the Atlanta Reign. Still, New York have to get themselves together and go for a potential capture here. Speedly spy checking for Flora with the beam and got a copy of Tracer here. Tracer. Yeah, just trying to get into the back line here and maybe land a big pulse bomb. As oh, speed. man. There's nothing there they can do as Hawk goes in speedily there as well. The supports just left to fend for their own for New York and they're not able to do so. Like, their composition, you know, Kellen isn't able to do too much in terms of paving the way for his team unless it's solo kills on the back line. And there have been very few of those so far in this round. Atlanta able to push up, take position, Use Vigilante in an aggressive position. Get a free kill on Ho One there. Too many freebies given by New York there, including that you know random EMP from Flora. And maybe it's something where you do need to bring in place for a New York, uh, New York Excelsior, where you can have a little bit more help, uh, whether it be for the Zen uh, or the Ana. So it looks like Flora will be going to the Ash. So uh, that'll be just a different change in terms of damage dealer. Not really. Is this self destruct? Let's see. Yeah. Does he get trapped here? Oh man, uh, he just backs up a little bit, and uh, yeah, it's a weird angle, obviously. The line of sight, yeah. Understanding how line of sight happens through like different doorways and stuff. So I feel that. Either way, though, that's devastating. It basically means you lose another thirty percent. Uh, not an exaggeration. That. Oh dear, New York look a little bit uncertain, right? Kellen obviously solid wrecking ball player, but the rest of them sort of understanding what Kellen's role is and how we can set them up. Well, it's it's not really clear to see how they're. Uh, able to Flora demonstrate is, an understanding of that. He's got to be really impactful on this Ash to make a difference, right? Being able to just pressure speedily out. Just kind of flying down, just landing on top of the supports. So, I mean, you know, you like, that's... You cannot let that happen, Matt. I mean, I, I don't even think Kelton's really given an opportunity to live, right? I mean, you, know, you send him out there on the ball. 
You have both supports stuck up there on the high ground with the uh, Ash getting no line of sight whatsoever. I mean, what is he supposed to do? Well, what I want to know is, you know, if seeing an Echo changes New York's, well, should change New York's game plan, right? Because you see there, that was Kellen rolling back with like no health left. So wherever he went, trying to pressure backline, he would have got discorded. Maybe Speedley's also out of pressure him down there with a focusing beam. And Kellen is, you know, struggling to actually get any freedom. And this is kind of what we saw in the last round where like Kellen and Yaki kept going behind and they weren't able to do anything. And they just kind of sit and wait for everybody else to come back. Right, here we go. And all right, now this time you open up with a pick. So maybe now you can make something out of it. Uh, yeah, Flora is aggressive waiting. He dropped down, played inside the cage, and able to find that shot on towards Yaki. Uh, excuse me, on Venom. So much better looks here. Getting rid of the tracer there relieves a lot of the pressure, and New York get to just move on in. Ah, uh, yes, a lot easier when you get those first bloods. <laughs> so, you know, being able to take out uh, the enemy tracer first is huge for New York, and. Now you'll have a transcendence for this next fight. It looked like there was somebody on the, from Atlanta actually putting a little bit of pressure on the point. So yeah, he's going for like a spawn kill here on Vigilante. Risky. Vigilante has shown he's very, very good at dealing with solo tracers. Look at that. They were ready for him. Force recall out of Yaki. So has a pulse though. We'll have to blink away from the pulse. Focusing beam. Flora gets healed by the transcendence just in time, but speedily. Uh, he's able to sneak away. Oh, oh what down to the remake. The remake. Oh, no. He's on the receiving end of some pretty, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's embarrassing at this level, but a bit unfortunate. Ignoble uh, ends for Ho Wan at multiple points. Yeah, yeah we, we don't know where that took place. Probably somewhere around the point. Uh, oh. Just kind of like walking around the corner. Could have been low, but uh, just unfortunate uh, that you lose your honor in that fashion. And Yeah, Hawk can just uh, walk around a corner or just wait in a corner for right. Ho Wan to come past and then just hit the remake. Uh, and, and New York invests like their transcendence into that one, so they don't have it for this next fight. Speedily actually going to copy the Zen up on the high ground. All right, oh, one down to Venom. Oh, okay, a lot of damage there on Venom. He walks straight into a nano boosted Zen orb. Gangnam Jim's able to find Hawk. Atlanta had control of the point that actually pushed up quite a long way here. So it's up to New York now to try and flip this in a timely manner as we're at 82 and counting. Yeah, which is interesting because Atlanta didn't seem like they needed to play that far up, right? They kind of had point control. They could have played a little bit further back. But in New York, have to cap here. You had Venom that came in to get a touch. Doesn't look like he's going to contest again. So it'll still be a just one fight territory here for the Atlanta Reign to win the map. Bob's up here for Flora. So towards the point he wants to play. Maybe not much time to get back into the high ground position over on the other side. So he's dead intends to play top of the point. Getting Venom here again. A couple times now Venom's falling first in a few of these fights, but he's at eight final blows right now, so nothing to sniff at. Lana uses the transcendence to try and keep people alive, but Kellen actually ends up taking out speedily with the mine, so the transcendence goes for nothing. It's a huge break there for New York as you get to wait for everybody to come back here for Atlanta. So New York getting close to that one fight territory. Venom wants to add to his tally here. What? Who is he even looking at? Gundam Jim just gets pasted with that bomb. No idea how Venom was able to connect that. Unreal. And a huge kill. Gundam Jim had the transcendence. Bob's going to get removed by Hawk very easily. Flora throws that up and Flora dropped to the low ground for whatever reason. So he's just a sitting duck. Atlanta Rain back in control now. Ultraviolet being protected by that. Defense Matrix. What an insane round. That's bizarre. Self-destruct available for Hawk here. So an easy remake. And Kellen just gets blown up solo by Vigilante, apparently. Speedily, you have to imagine, is there. Copies the Ana, fired a grenade. Finishes the kill on Gangnam Jin. And New York don't even really have the ability to step up here outside of using Flora to stall. Yaki's here, but immediately gets picked off. Just a very, very strange map in general. The Atlanta Rain come out on top here. A couple slips in that second round. But overall, Matt, definitely look like they're more comfortable. Yeah, Atlanta seems to have the answers for a lot of the compositions that teams are throwing out there uh, with the wrecking ball play here from NYXL early on. Uh, it, it doesn't look like that's going to be the play for out this series. They're going to have to come up with something else. All right, New York, trying to put it together here. The confluence of front and back lines might be a place to start here as they Work on the game plan for our next map in this series. Atlanta starts strong here again as the Venom speedily connection yielding kills.
Pretty powerful start in this series for Venom of the Atlanta Rain. One half of a very powerful dive combo between him and Hawk. Venom, I mean, look, brought into this team as a tracer specialist and delivering on that promise with 11 final blows, three deaths, and a pulse bomb kill attach rate, rather, of 75%. That last one, no idea how he sticks on out. The I, don't game Virginia. I don't know what he's looking at, honestly. He must have known where he is. It was like a flick, whatever it was. Looks like Venom had done that a million times before, and honestly, he probably has. Yeah, his tracer was really strong there. Uh, in map number one, as New York never really got anything going. Uh, you know, playing these ball columns looked like Atlanta. You know, the supports weren't uh, under pressure, and even when they were, they were able to survive it on their own a lot of the times with a little bit of help uh, with Hawk's defense matrix. But uh, you know, maybe as we move into map number two, which will be King's Row, we see some different stuff here from uh, New York. Yeah, okay. So we'll be... No sign of Ansun J getting rotated into the lineup, which is what New York have kind of done here and there, right? Makes you wonder, Matt, is, does that mean like the Brig is off the table and that New York is strictly trying to play like an Ana Zen look? Again, we've only seen control, so hard to say. But you wonder what it gives you maybe against someone like Venom, who's just, he's in a very positive game script, to use a sports ball term, right? Like he, no one's really countering him. He's getting to the back line. 11 and three kind of says it all, right? Yeah, and uh, it'll be New York on defense first, and they'll actually come out with the Winston here. So, uh, Winston with the Ash uh, Tracer on his Zen. Uh, nothing surprising with those three, as we've seen them a lot in the meta. The the Winston here versus the Diva will be interesting. The Winston not really able to you know, duel as much. Obviously, the defense matrix doesn't really help when Winston uh, is there uh, putting down damage on the supports, so maybe a little bit of extra... I uh, know pressure there, but really worried if they're going to be able to keep Kellen alive through some of this. What's a bit scary as well against the Echo, I, I want to suggest, to be able yeah. to burn Kellen down. Look, defensive dives on King's Row, Matt, they're always pretty short-lived unless there's a significant skill disparity or fundamentals disparity between two teams, right? Which we really don't often see at that level, even at Overwatch League. So, Kellen, Ball and Winston definitely comfort picks for him, right? The kind of player that probably doesn't want to play Zaya and Diva and such. Unfortunately for him, Hawk can kind of do it all. Yes, yeah, Hawk gets to the high ground there and they try and body block Kellen in and kind of trap him. You see how they're just pushing him back down into the hallway and there's also some damage down coming in uh, from Venom. So they finally dislodge Kellen from the high ground. You see at the top of your screen though, like the health bars of Atlanta, pretty yeah, low. Flora they just smacked. wait for a sec. Yeah, Flora as well. It's possible the Vigilante set a salvo of orbs in his direction. Either way, Venom goes very low. Has to recall, if I'm not mistaken, from Gangnam Jim's pressure. So onto the point we are for the Atlanta Rain now. Hawk gets d -mech. so Kellen able to carve him out of the suit here. Good response from Gangnam Jim dropping down, and Flora still has this high ground control. So Hawk's been removed, and so is Speedily. All right, so what do you do if you're the Atlanta Rain? Do you decide to continue to play this? I think they actually did get what they wanted there, which was like high ground pressure. Uh, Hawk just gets demecked. Maybe goes in a little bit too deep on the supports up here on the high ground is uh, he'll make it his way through the choke is we're kind of back to how we were at the initial moments of the game. Both teams just kind of feeling each other out trying to really for the Atlanta rain get that space. Yeah, Speedly had trying to advance across this gap right without being shot to pieces by Flora. Pulse stick. That's a good one. Kellen hangs around a little too long and eventually he gets brought down. And now the rest of this New York structure looks much less stable without that foundation. Flora eventually gets dragged down by Speedly, who really took his time getting across the map, but that careful play yields the result they were looking for. And Venom is so good at landing those sticks, just like how we saw in Elios, where if you're going to be the Winston and just kind of stand in front of him and be that big of a target, I mean, that's bound to happen, right? As uh, the Atlanta Rain, they'll take point A, and now they'll get the car moving through the next stage of the map. Transcendent, it's up now for Vigilante. All of your backline ults are present here for New York. Again, Winston, fantastic nano boost candidate. Definitely one of the best that New York have available to them presently. Flora trying to make sure he can play out in the open, but needs a lot of healing in order to do this because the poke is quite immense, especially from Vigilante's direction. <laughs> this fight Kellen's has to go off for New York. 
I mean, farming what? I mean, they have, they all have ults. To, yeah. he's, he's nothing to farm. He got that primal now. In he goes. So put the sleep, but also with a body grenade on him. Okay, Nanoed. And of course, that primal rage gives him that health back here. Vigilante already used his transcendence a little earlier on here. So Kellen's able to wake up and get some damage done. Those boosted micro rockets. Finding purchase on Flora here and Venom, Venom with, another with another two in that fight. Now. Man. I'm telling you, positive game script. This guy's going wild. That is all five ultimates used there for New York, and the cart's still moving for the Atlanta Reign. That just tells you kind of where we're at in this one. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, a results-based assessment. Yeah, tra transcendence used a little bit early by Vigilante, but ends up keeping everybody alive. Let's take a look. It's beautiful there from Venom. He's 100% uh, on Pulse Bomb Stick so far this map, so that uh, total for the series is looking pretty scary. And you have the Nano here to use, whether it's on Speedly on the Hawk to try and get this payload across the line here. Uh, I mean, you could even use on Vigilante, as we've seen them do it a few times throughout this series. Yeah, just to keep someone alive, right, is the take this kind of damage. Can you even... Can you even There's no hold here. Point? No, no, you can't. No way. That's the issue, right? Ugh. There's not a lot of, like, defensive architecture to keep the, the Winston alive. Kellen, it's hard. I think you're like, you, you is literally set yourself a very difficult task here trying to find success with this Winston. Defensively, especially. Especially against D.Va and Zen. Yeah, I mean, what was the old copy pasta with Winston? Like a Win Winton jump, Winton zap. At this point, I think it's just Winton jump, Winton die. Winton nap. Yeah. No, it doesn't even die. There's, been, doesn't some, even get there's there. been some Winton napping, to be fair. I've <laughs> seen that. He just went wind and jump, wind and die. As another self-destruct kill <laughs> from Hawk, as he's been able to find these. Uh, whether it be Ho on now, Yaki. It's, uh, man, this is a not a good defense here from New York. Uh, I also think just really strong play consistently here from the Atlanta Reign, being able to play some of these comps. Bio grenade got shut down there by Hawk. He ate that one up speedily. Hit by one for the time being, but he'll shrug that off. Flora able to pick him off though, regardless. Venom will take a break here. Atlanta pull back three minutes plus to work with, so it'll give some ground. So you do give yourself some breathing room here if you're New York, as uh, Yaki quickly realized there wasn't a health pack underneath him, so need to get back to the rest of the team. So uh, there's the pulse bomb from Venom that doesn't get anything. So live through that, which is huge, as that's not been something that uh, been able to avoid if you're in New York. So. Maybe there's a defensive hold here. You know, 2.41 on the clock. Still a lot of time, though. Hawk trying to encroach here on Flora. And Keller knows that it's really hard to shift Hawk, especially with all the damage we'll take back in response. Speedly copies the Winston here. Look how quickly he's going towards that primal. He has it straight away. Flora just having to try and stay inside the transcendence if possible. The Bob here is perfect. Contests that cart. Ultraviolet is taken down by Kellen, who finally was able to get some success in the back line. Speedly spent... A long time in primal form there. That, that's the focusing beam. That's what's going to give you, especially with that Discord Orb. Kellen just exploded from about 60% of his health. And you think this in is over now. Yeah, you would think it is. And you you can see just how much more survivable the D.Va is than the Winston, right? Like, we've seen even with the primal, being able to get uh, they're just kind of nuked down with that focusing beam. As Hawk at that point was like right in front of the spawn door using the defense matrix. Obviously some healing from the supports, but still really healthy, all things considered. I think again, you know, Kellen going up against the Diva, going up against the Zen. Really difficult to find opportunities to have great success. Even in that last fight though, to be fair, he finally gets into the back line, right? You can, you can sort of see the result yeah. of that. Uh, Atlanta do lose, I think it was ultraviolet there in that fight. But again, I mean, let's, let's let's talk numbers. I mean, Venom is seven and two right now. Hawk is five and one. Vigilante four and one. Final blows to deaths. It was really just that first fight, right, uh, where the uh, New York Celsius kind of held that high ground and they were able to win. Uh, after that, it was all Atlanta rain. And let's see let's see what they decided to do here. So Atlanta actually comes out with speedily on the Sombra. So uh, they'll have a Sombra tracer look here. So they'll move away from the Echo on defense here. The Sombra, I think, is probably the right play on D. allows you to play a little bit more freely throughout the choke, where Echo, uh, you have to play a little bit more aggressive, which I don't think the Atlanta Reign really feel the need to do at the moment. Uh, and for New York, still some time to make some changes, right? Uh, you no know, Flora right now hovering the Sojourn uh, with the Winston, potentially. Uh, do you run like the Sojourn with the Tracer? We've seen some teams do that. Uh, Sojourn provides a little bit more... It burst that long range, but also s more survivable, you know, a little bit uh, more slippery, close range, trying to track down. 
Venom is getting about a pulse bomb every minute, Matt, which is almost twice as fast as sort of average. Usually it's like 135, 145. Uh, so that is ridiculous. So Flora will play the Sombra. So we'll actually just get a mirror matchup outside of the tanks. So uh, we, we, we get a good idea of kind of where D.Va versus Winston and just kind of on their own stand here in this meta a little bit. So Atlanta get dove inside the hotel there, but Ultraviolet's in a good enough place here just to top them up and let them push forward. Hawk here struggling with that dis uh, rather with that Discord orb on him, but the bite grenade for the amped healing and Ultraviolet just plugs the gaps in Hawk's armor and says off you go. Yeah, the bio grenade plus some heals also. The use of defense matrix backing up. Allows Hawk to live through that. They get a early pick from Venom, I believe, yet again. So, oh yeah, Kellen just kind of jumps, tickles that high ground, and the TP right away from Speedily. is oh, nice shots there on the Ultraviolet. So you back up the supports maybe a little bit. Dungeon Jim hacked it. This is dangerous. Here come the rain. Okay, they walk into a body grenade. Hawk gets desuited there, but that's it really. And it looks like Hawk's building up pretty quickly towards his ring. <laughs> He's gonna be able to just climb the heck back in. I think New York maybe were hoping to pick him off outside of Mech, but not. Nah, he's back in. He's ready to he's rumble. He's back in his Mech. Yeah. Oh, that's disastrous. But you see when the dive comes through off of a hack onto those supports, there's zero help there from New York. It's a nice biotic grenade from uh, Owen, to be fair. It's just not enough to be able to live through. Like right there when you have you know, the D.Va in play, let's say you have the defense matrix coming back and that biotic grenade, that's probably enough to keep players alive. Probably the difference. Ooh, okay, not too shabby there from Gangnam Jim. Takes they the, gotta capitalize on this. Yeah, take the key piece off the table here, and looks like they have Transcendence is used here from uh, Vigilante. He was dead to rights otherwise. There are ult tiers. So you think Speedly maybe tries to have a big EMP here, and he goes for it. It only gets Ho one and not Gangnam Jim, crucially. So that Zen can come back in after finding the first pick and even have a Transcendence if needed, but it may not be here. Decent hold for Atlanta, also playing like a, a you know, quasi dive defense. Looks like they're you about trying to give up this if you're Atlanta? It's, it's only the here. second tick. Yeah, you nano, you nano Hawk and you Oof, send him on in. Flora. Oh dear, that was scary. Gangnam Jim had to use their Transcendence. Flora, very low there. So despite being nanoed, Hawk does get desuited. Gonna be able to climb back in. Oh, oh my! Oh, oh, my. Oh, man. How do you have time to put a question mark in chat? You're playing the game, son! Ah, insult and injury in equal measure. And the New York Excelsior gets suplexed. Mate, that's a macro! Uh, that's a bloody macro! How has he done this? Oh! He just took <laughs> all the bloody blocks! Yeah, that was EMP! Me? Did he break up the EMP <laughs> with it? Oh, Flora EMP there too! Oh, it is. It I've is done tragic. this for five years and I've never seen anything like that! Uh, feels like I'm watching the Jets. <laughs> that was as catastrophic as it could possibly oh, yeah. have been! Alright, so you. Okay, but uh, you did get two ticks, right? You have a Yaki Pulse Bomb here. You still have a Nano. You have some tools here for New York to be able to make something work. Let's see if they can do it. That was bad, but maybe not the end. Yaki trying to clamber up the slippery ladder from rock bottom. Kellen is nanoed here, but unable to find much of a target. He does get hit with the Vita Grenade there. Collecting myself, ladies and gentlemen, bear with me. 100 HP, he'll be able to circle back, get a small health pack here, and with Venom out of the picture, New York get that point, but... Oh dear. They're just gonna look ahead. Not that bad. It looked really bad. It was really bad, but they get the point. Uh, now you only have 2.22 on the clock and counting to, to make something out of it, right? Where you're going to have double support ults with that EMP here, so that should be a fight win in theory, uh, for the Atlanta rain. You can play pretty aggressive around these ults. Uh, and then you're probably looking like, oh, well, there goes Flora again. So, I mean, I think you just see, Mitch, like how much more effective the D.Va is, right? Like being able to just finish these kills off solo. He's eight and like one. Hawk, yeah, Hawk able to get out with his life. And look at this. Hawk has I mean, 9,000 damage per 10. Yeah, now you get this EMP off. I mean. Gangnam Jim, yeah, he's the first one in speedily sights and it's an easy kill. Transcendence now from Vigilante to try and back this up because it's quite aggressive from the Atlanta Rain and Hawk just clambers back. Is it odd? I fully so expected another remake kill there. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. They're I really rare. I fully Yaki expected a remake kill. Get caught under that or something ridiculous. Hawk can do no wrong, ladies and gentlemen. The Midas touch today where it really counts. 
A minute and 23 on the clock for, uh, oh, for New York to try and figure out a way to get out of this stranglehold. Yeah, and look at, like, he gets Kellen almost to half and then able to use the defense matrix keeps himself pretty topped up, so. They got rid of uh, Speedily's Translocator here. We're looking at Yaki's POV. Is, uh, is he going to try and make a play for the supports? Uh, looks well, like he did. He took a face off. Yeah, he took a lady. huge, like, uh, yeah, like a big chunk of damage there. All right. Vigilante, can you do it again? There's the stick. It's a good one. Vigilante's down there. Ultraviolet Nanos, I think, to try and keep him alive. It cannot. Yeah. Ho One finds him there with a biotic grenade. Ho One, by the way, with almost 15,000 healing per 10. Ultraviolet has that uh, right now. He's. He's hit some big biotic grenades, uh, Hold on. Uh, they yep. just have not been able to capitalize on a lot of it. We're right there, they actually end up all Atlanta Rain using that nano boost onto Vigilante and not able to keep him up through it. So, New York, good collapse there onto the supports. 27 seconds on the clock, though. You have both flankers here still alive as Yaki will take out Vigilante at the spawn, but is that enough? Oh, actually, the, the Transcendents get forced out here. I believe that's by Venom. Yeah, they double back as well for Kellen, who was hacked, so maybe concerned there for New York that they sort of lose their ability to push here. But they might get away with this. Yeah, the Atlanta Rain are uh, a little bit of disarray at this point here, Matt. Get cleaned up yeah. by New York, and they have a crack at this now, a real shot. Absolutely, as Yaki gets an early first pick, uh, and you're able to capitalize on that again. So being able to make plays for these supports, that's what's making the difference here uh, for New York is... The payload will get moving around the corner as Kellen trying to control some of that high ground, but that Discord, the D.Va damage too much. So he has to back down for just a sec. Once again, runs into Kellen. See how Winston tends to come out second best in those head-to-heads. Not too many duelists in the game like D.Va. Yaki gets picked off here. This is dangerous. Venom's in. He's in. An uncharacteristic miss of the Pulse Bomb here, but he still had an incredible map. And there's another one who one surely going to be in trouble somehow. Good fight, it grenade at the feet there, but eventually gets brought down. Venom picked off by Flora. Hawk in trouble. He just re met so wants to return to the rest of his team, but there's plenty of action here for Atlanta. They've got to be careful, though. Hawk desuited again. It, yeah, maybe you didn't need to push in that far as Ultraviolet and Vigilante use. trying to keep themselves alive Ooh. here. So, oh, that's a big EMP over the top and an Anno on the speed. They were safe. The bubble was there. New York thought they could play from inside of that. Flora is playing aggressively as a result of that. Speedily just makes that disappear in a click of his fingers. And at 12 seconds remain in the round here for New York to get some value out of this transcendence. Yaki wants to go forward, but his uh -oh. pulse bomb gets eaten up. Vigilante goes for the transcendence here. Still pressure on Ultraviolet, but Vigilante is tending towards his backline, making sure Ultraviolet can stay alive. And Yaki, it's a desperate push. Gangnam Jin can't get to him. That's a stick from Venom. How does he develop these pulse bombs so quickly? He gets a pulse bomb so often. One minute, 15 what? per bomb. It's ridiculous. Flora, yeah. though, with two. <laughs> Flora Flor with like three or so with the overclock. And you'll keep this moving now. Is the Atlanta Rain, they use a lot of ultimates here. You're going to get lots of players back. Pretty much everybody here. Full strength for New York. So. You have a real shot at this. Venom onto the card here. Yaki with that Harmony Orb and Ultraviolet can't do much with the Winston bubble in play. Flora, slate positioning here. He's had an incredible map, or at least the last few minutes have been outstanding for him. Hawk is doused with the Biotic Grenade and Vigilante falls. He tries to challenge Flora on that angle. Venom gets rid of the main tank here, but speedily is down. So now Hawk needs to step up and he does. Gets rid of Yaki now, self-destruct, but he's picked off in mid-air. He still gets Gangnam Jim, and not a self-destruct kill. Flora trying to do everything on his own. Ultraviolet now stepping up to the plate, and the sleep down is good. The nano boost on Flora, he's fuming. He can't believe it. The Atlanta Rain shut New York down here, just as they were starting to find a second wind, but ultimately too little, too late. I feel terrible for Flora. Like, he played so sick there towards the end in the OT. And Ultraviolet just with a, a perfect sleep dart ran. Like, if you're not going to hit that sleep, he's got the nano there. And with the way he's shooting, who knows what happens. Is you, know, you needed to kill three or four to keep this going for New York, and it was not enough at the end. That's just unbelievable there from uh, rather floor. Incredible stuff here. Something about New York DPS and trying to carry the game themselves at times, and Flora almost did. Incredible performance there. We're all back and forth stuff, but eventually the rain come out on top, looking a little more solid, at least. New York have something to go on now. Chance to lift their spirits after a very difficult map. Stick around for map number three.
Summer Showdown may have ended, but Happy Genji is still bringing the summer vibes. You can grab the Summer Showdown legendary skin for just 200 league tokens. Tokens that you can now get, by the way, on pickups, but that's another story. Make sure you get your hands on that one to own a piece of OWL history September 6th onwards. How much longer it's on uh, available for? You should probably snap it up now, because who knows? Here today, gone tomorrow. Isn't that what they say, Matthew? You might as well. Yeah. Couldn't hurt. Everybody plays some Genji. Whether they're so, good at it or not. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, pra I'm, I'm practicing for Kiriko again. You don't worry. That's how I'm. That's how I'm getting my reps in. Talk to me. Talk to, talk to me about what yeah. happened in the, in the second half of that Kings Row round. Because first of all, it was just like it was a you know comedy of errors for for New York. We're just pain because the Atlanta Rain were just playing some top level Overwatch. Then though, they get a foot in the door, don't they? And it starts to get yeah, a little yeah. little dicey. Yeah, Yaku is actually able to make plays for the supports where. Uh, they weren't doing a good of a uh, job as they were in kind of like pass rounds the Atlanta Rain and like maybe peeling back for them, you know, giving them some more help. Uh, and Yaki was making them pay for it. They started to get the payload moving. And towards the end, I mean, it was really just Flora just trying to keep them alive uh, all throughout. But I mean, I guess, is that like kind of the story with New York that their season is like they get these sick games from like some of their DPS players. Uh, and it's just like you can't exactly just like win that way. Yeah. Like just by 
the, the, the recipe for winning is not just Yaki kill, you know, four players or it's, four It's Flora, Flora go kill, kill or like Yaki five. go kill. Yep. Yeah, like, uh, it just doesn't feel like they, they and it's like, I, I actually don't even know really from like kind of perspective because they've like made so many changes and whatnot with like uh, supports and here and there. Like, it's, it almost kind of feels like they're just putting their resources into those players and just hoping they do that. I just don't know if you can win consistently doing that, which I think, you know, judging by their record, right? I think it's true. Well, I hope Flora's still wearing those carry pants, man. Because he's got a new opponent now in the form of Kai getting subbed in here for the Atlanta Reign. Now, last time we saw Atlanta on this map, they actually brought Nero in. Uh, you remember yep. Nero played the Genji, I think, mostly. Uh, maybe there was some Hanzo there. I do remember the Genji. So Venom instead is going to be picking up the role. It was a shaky map for Atlanta. It was in that uh, Toronto matchup there, obviously. Started to uh, started to run out of steam there when you know we really saw Hisu uh, step up to the plate. Finale also strong in that series. So, <laughs> is this uh, is this all the playtime we're gonna get from Moira in Overwatch too? Just the piano yeah. play. She's <laughs> very <laughs> she's very precise. You know what I mean? When you really need yeah. to make sure you hit the right keys. I feel like this is a good map for Atlanta. From you want you can bring Kai in to play Widow, which we know he's incredible on. Yep. Uh, but then also having Hawk on Sigma, like one of the better Sigmas you know, in the league, do you, uh, I believe. Do you have an opinion on Ultraviolet as a Batiste player, really? I, I don't think we've seen like enough of it throughout this yeah. season. Uh, but We know we were really excited about his Ana, right? We've, we've kind of always really yeah. enjoyed that. The Batiste, though, he has played it, but perhaps not as you know memorable uh, showing. And that might just be the hero, well, really. Well, look, judging by his performances on all the other supports we've seen him play, I think he's going to be just fine uh, <laughs> on the map as uh, Yaki Don't gets the get high ground tiger. here. Yeah, he gets right up in there trying to put some pressure on Akai. Well, that's why, yeah, Yaki obviously needs to be doing that frequently. Giving Kai a free reign seems like a very uh, dangerous proposition. Kai still gets this very long sight line here, which means Atlanta are rounding the corner. This next little bit between here and the checkpoints where it gets harder for Kai to get value on this New York overextend. They are extending now, but Flora, look at that, hits the ground. And the shot finds a head of Vigilante almost instantly. Woo, okay. All yeah, right. Carry Pants still buckled on. And you just see how aggressive Yaki is. Like, they get oh, a, a, an early... Okay, the way you set that up is, oh, he's doing it, and then he just missed the grapple like four <laughs> hey, times. No. It's right. like, oh, man. It's Listen, a special you to, move. <laughs> you have to allow the story to have a yeah, foothold, right? right? right. It doesn't take True. it, and, you know, that's hey. not on me. That's all I've got. You got us all built up like something crazy is going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. It's starting to sound like a Florida oh, lame. Oh, oh, oh dear! <laughs> okay, Venom. All right. Couple, couple bloopers here. A little bit of... Uh, uh, good amp matrix here uh, and immortality field from ultraviolet keeping like everybody alive uh, with the gravitic plus. That was a nice. Yaki keeps the pressure on though. He knew that a crease was headed his way, so he just ducks back around the corner. <laughs> Kai needs to find something here, but very limited opportunity. He's a grapple again. Doesn't find anything with that, and that's the amp matrix from New York. Yaki's going to go right in with this blade, yeah. Oh, immortality kill for Kai. Oh, the accretion hook. Damn, the man like a oh. trebuchet with an ACOG sight strapped to it. Oh. Love it. it yeah, and uh, now I think you're going to start to see the Atlanta Rain make some progress here you know, with the payload. <laughs> probably get this A checkpoint. Uh, there have been a few times where we've seen y Yaki, he goes in. Like, he's, like, taking big chunks of damage and then dashing in. Uh, especially when they have the immortality I field mean, on the other side. I mean, that seems reasonable, though, man. The blade, but there's an immortality field and a bloody boulder so, coming in. So, th so this is interesting. Uh, Flora will stay on the Widow, but Yaki will now will pick up the Sojourn. Okay. Uh, so going, uh, I mean, Sojourn, not really a hit scan, per se, but going with, like, two, like medium to longer range damage dealers here to combo with the Sigma uh, leads me to believe they want to play a little bit more defensive. Yaki, who spent much of his time before this team playing alongside BQB, uh, not really a lot of opportunities to show what kind of hit scan player he was, but then Sojourn, just a really solid pick here, and all oh, this air uh, matrix is a moving and schmoving, Matt. 
Oh, that's an incredible preventing flux. How does he catch everyone in there? Flora gets Hawk on the way down. That's beautiful from Kellen. Yeah, and even with the transcendence, it's not enough to keep Hawk alive, right? So this should force the Atlanta rain backwards. It's just a matter of how far back. So that's a pulse bomb from Venom. Doesn't get anything. Ty knows he's done. And now they'll push up. Uh, it's starting to be a good defense here from New York uh, on this second checkpoint. Let's just see if they can uh, you know, live through some more of this. Is out. Nice hey. shot there. Yes, Yonki is able to take out Venom. So you start to test, get some staggers here. It's really good. Give it to you by the numbers here. Uh, Hawk is accounting for 42% of his team's damage uh, right now. Kai and Venom only have one final blow each. Flora has three. Yaki has two. Oh, okay. Fast is uh, the switch over to the Hanzo. So if you want to play the Sojourn, yeah, we'll play double sniper here. Which gives them even more range, right? Than the composition that the, yeah, that New York has. Tell him now, harder for him to do this. Hawk will pressure that shield down, so Ultra Bite him, but now the Storm Arrow as well to make it harder to actually create a staging ground. And there it is, Hawk catches Kellen inside the Gravity Flux. Not as flashy as Kellen's, but actually gets the same amount of kills ultimately. The and then again, Hawk takes space. At this point, uh, with these kind of compositions, you feel like uh, Hawk will have just an advantage in terms of his shield, right? Uh, not now, as it takes a ton of damage. Uh, as he's trying to move up, but in kind of the mirror, right, where they're kind of like both at full strength, having that Hanzo in play, uh, able to burst those shields in with the Storm Arrows. Oh my goodness. Oh, Vigilante. That's really just speculation from him, and he gets the jackpot in reward. So New York will take high ground here. In for sight was used by Kai, so that'll buy some space here for the rain. Ooh. He's like an inch off there, I think, from a headshot. Real close. That would have opened things right up here. Would have allowed Venom to start to pressure Yaki even further, who already is playing pretty safely from what we can see. Yep, back here behind Kellen. Is he trying to wrap around? He's thinking about it. This is such a Yaki move. Here he goes. Falls back. Maybe not a lot of target for him to take. A minute 40 still here for the rain. And there's the Ant Matrix. Okay, they moved into the low ground. So Gravitic Flux here. Should find purges. And yeah, everyone takes a ton of damage. Immortality field not used as far as we can see. And is a Dragon Strike. Uh, I think the, immortal, uh, the Immortality field was used. They just didn't have to use the Transcendence because nobody actually was able to get in there and put any extra damage down. Gotcha. Kai gets Yaki. There it is. Tough for Yaki to play against Hanzo Widow with this setup, and Venom knows exactly <laughs> what's on the other side of that. Kangnam didn't come in, but the damage is already done. Floor is down as well, and there's no DPS left. So now Kangnam didn't destroys himself at the cart, but everybody is there for the Atlanta Rain. Kai is a safe position now. The infra side to make matters worse. He knows where Gangnam Jin is, who's had a great couple of moments, couple of kills. Far from enough, though, as Atlanta get the job done. Yes, they finish the map with some time remaining as well. Some of those shots from Venom able to access the high ground there on Hanzo. Sick towards the end where, you know, even when we were watching Venom doing that, you know, Kai was actually able to land like two headshots back to back there, which really opened it up. But that Gravitic Flux from Kellen, it was good. It was big. It hit everybody. But there was just absolutely no follow through inside that small room. Well, what's crazy to me is that, you know, you look at the health bars when that happen. You don't actually see the little indicator that shows that they're being kept alive via immortality field. Yeah. Uh, so it's possible that Atlanta don't use it or, or you don't have a chance to use it adequately. Either way, they don't lose anyone to it at all. So, you know, you have to wonder what the plan is there for Kellen. It's correct, right? Maybe he's trying to make it so Atlanta can't make use of that air matrix for a time, but there's got to be another component to that plan. It's a, another great flux, but who is in there? Yeah, there's nobody there to make a plan. Oh, oh. God, this is how it went down. Oh, that is swaggy. Holy moly. And then he gets another DPS. And yeah. this is when, uh, yeah, Venom takes out Ho on at the top. So you get both DPS uh, and the Batiste out at that point. I mean, that is a massive kills there. And again, Kai, Kai is a really quiet round up until that point. Uh, he doubled his kills for the round in that moment. Uh, it just goes to show, really, it's 
it's not really about how many, but sort of the context of those eliminations is when they occur. Most of Atlanta have at least... Everyone in Atlanta has at least three final blows. Gangnam Jin leads his team in final blows right now. Four. What do you think about the Widow comboed with the Sojourn? Well, like, what's your thoughts on that? So Sojourn's really susceptible when she has to deal with two snipers. You can keep track of the Widow to some degree, right? But when there's a Hanzo looking for you, it's kind of scary. You can get away from an enemy tracer, like Venom might try and harass you, but you have some mobility. It's just... Kai is always going to be a threat to you. Right. Yeah, the issue is, is like, a, yeah, I think maybe you're a little bit more, uh, you know, stable and a little bit easier to defend against this Tracer. Uh, but the Widow is a real issue for you. And even there, like, you know, Yaki pushed up to look for something, right? Fair enough, make use of that, mo that, that mobility, but Venom has probably taken that kind of matchup thousands of times. Ooh, I just wonder if, like, dirty. what's, like, the... Why why do that versus like play a tracer of your own or a Genji or something like that, right? Uh, maybe it is to just kind of like play a little bit slower, help out a little bit well, more. But you might have just got your answer actually uh, from what Gangnam Jim was just able to do. It's in, it's so difficult uh, to dive Zens and with immortality yeah. field down. Now if it's like an Ana Zen backline, you probably do it right. Venom goes eleven and three in the first map against an Ana Zen backline. But when Batista able to sort of save the life of uh, the Zen, also have like. He can randomly, like, triple dink you, uh, you know, if you're a Tracer, and you're just like, oh, I guess I'm dead if I get breathed on here by the Zen. Vigilante has also shown that he's, like, a top Zen in, in dealing with Tracer dives, so... Also, what are your flank fruits like attacking here, man? Probably yeah, not very good, right? Yeah, Yeah, I mean, if anything, you'd have to play Genji, right? Yeah. And that's what we normally see uh, quite often. And we even see, like, Sojourn Genji uh, on this map during, like, the Junk Goats meta as well. All right, so there's that uh, Immortality Field down. Flora's able to find Ultraviolet here. Yeah, the Gravitic Flux is a pretty darn good one. Get you know, Atlanta tend to suffer on defense so far this week on this map. Yeah, it's, uh, Jim is just Kai, popping off. Kai gets one, but it's now going to be good enough to get a hold. Is that'll be point A taken uh, for New York in a, in a relatively fast time, right? I mean, they have four minutes and twenty on the clock to get this second checkpoint. So, so you'll have uh, what you have your Infrasight here, your Transcendence, you'll have your Overclock. So. Some good alternates to be able to, you know, potentially take this second checkpoint. Because remember, like, it, it's also difficult to finish this map, and it's also like really difficult to finish with time, right? Because uh, Atlanta still does have that 56 seconds they finish with. I mean, I'm watching. I'm looking for Venom here to, to have big impact. He has to deal with Gangnam Jin, the constant threat. I think uh, the aforementioned just forced the recall out of Venom uh, to try to go in. Pulse here for Venom, so that you know that really high stick rate. He probably needs to continue to to pad. No connection there, but hey. Uh, Flora walks into the blast radius of it anyway. So good start here. Finds that first pick and Atlanta back it up with a transcendence. This means Venom can play with inside that. Be a frontliner for a time. Still New York want to push up despite not having the Widow. Yeah, I mean, you, st you still have some pressure here. So if Vichelani gets low, as ah, uh, now you probably have to back up. You've lost your Zen Why, why was damage. he cooking there? You see what Gangnam Jim was? <laughs> Man, New York is full of players that are like, I'm going to carry the team now. I'm going to make the play to really turn this around. Some really ambitious individuals. Yeah, that flank from Gangnam Jim was... <laughs> the thing is, is like a, you, you, can't, you can't make one play and win the game, right? It's like a series of like hundreds of plays where sometimes I think uh, when you get into these type of situations as a player, you're just like pressing a little bit to make the play, right? Uh, the issue is you can't have like multiple people think that way. I mean, it's really even hard to have one person think that way. <laughs> All right, New York. Floor is probing here. Yeah, it knows that Vigilante is going to be hovering on that sort of stairwell, and someone probably will be peeking every now and then to get an idea of where Flora is. Venom down, but it's traded. Gangnam Jim is missing. Pretty key piece here for uh, New York setup is out of the picture. This is a flux from. Yeah, solo okay, flux yeah. on Hawk there. No, I mean, this oh. that's one out of Kellen. Yeah, onto Hawk. Oh, yeah, yeah, and he doesn't get anything, though. I mean, play around no, that Yaki, corner. I mean, Yaki's been pretty consistent here. Yaki should be fine if he drops down to 100. No ability ready for Atlanta to follow that up. Immortality Field was in play. Ho one cleverly deploys that one. And yeah, Yaki now can get aggressive here. Venom's back, though. This is scary. Infrasight's in play. Card is three meters away. Oh, another Ooh. one from Venom. These pulses, man. They don't even have to be sticks in some cases, right? This time catches Gangnam Jim inside of it. Not the most mobile hero. Yaki able to burn Venom down, though. And Hawk can step out. This is more stall. Not terrible now. Look at the clock, Matt. They managed to burn this down pretty admirably. About three minutes. Yaki's starting. 
really get the work done here. Yeah, they burn about three minutes, though, uh, in totality. So pretty good uh, contest defense there from the Atlanta Reign. They'll now go back to the Sigma-based composition. And this will be the toughest stretch for New York. Can they complete the map? Good to see you. Sorry I worked last time, right? A lot of space for your, your backliners here. But then I'm on the Hanzo, so much less uh, ability to harass New York. Kellen going with Yaki and Gangnam Jin primarily here, just forced back by Hawk. That's just due diligence by Atlanta's tank there, making sure that New York don't get too much free real estate here. And they'll switch uh, Venom over to the Hanzo here for just l more long range. More pressure onto the Widow and then also, I mean, the, trying to push into a Dragon here at the end is uh, pretty <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I saw him with a tick rate the on the observer shot. side, but I didn't, you don't even see that, right? He knows, he knows it's coming, but Kellen barely peeks around a corner. There it is. Venom strikes, and Kai is not to be outdone. Those two kills, it's over for New York here. Oh. It's uh, Venom instead of Kai this time, as now New York pushed all the way back to their spawn. It's a minute 40 on the clock. If you're Atlanta, you don't have to really use any ultimates. You're killing in a really bad spot. Yeah, he's going to get dropped. So you're just kind of getting staggered out here. Venom is starting to shed the moniker, I think, of uh, Tracer Specialist on this kind of map. And this is, you know, what in, in the past, you know, Nero would come in and provide this, this extra Hanzo pressure. Venom's hero pool starting to resemble that of Pelicans a little more. Yeah. Uh, who is also a you know, great Hanzo combined with his Tracer play. Dragon Strike, that's going to keep you in spawn for a time. As Ho Wan did use an air matrix. Hard to find value from it here with the bunker right in front of him. Okay, here's an Atlanta Rain air matrix. This one could be a little bit scarier. Kellen has to drop down inside that one and can't spend too much time in the air as a result of it. Venom's down. Kellen eventually gets rid of him, even with the immortality field deployed by Ultraviolet. Hawk might go for a flux here again to slow New York down. But Kellen out of the picture, that's looking more and more likely now. Yep. Gangnam didn't caught inside that. Oh, where is Ultraviolet? Just killing everybody off to the sitting side. The <laughs> yep, just sitting at the back, Matt. I think you wrapped on the left. You might be yeah, right hit, there. Hit I think he was on the side. Yeah. Bad to worse now for New York. Hawk still not done as well. Every second on this on this spawn camp is essentially a free one because the cart's been sliding back this whole time. <laughs> it's Kai. Look at that look on his face. Uh -huh. An impish grin. Kai, you had better get some value here, friend. Don't worry about it, Governor. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on! Oh, fires off a shot there as uh, Yaki over to the Genji uh, now picks up three. Really? Hawk brought down here. I mean, it's not really Kai's fault. I mean, it, it, it just so happens that the rest of his team get rolled and then Flora kills Kai as he tries to flank them anyway. So, all right, we've shaken off the, the silly juice. Atlanta Rain have another full fight oh. here. Hawk switching to the Diva. Yeah, Matrix as well here for Ultraviolet. I uh, get two with an accretion, but... Oh, Yaki, got Yaki caught just there. takes so much damage on the high ground, man. Ultraviolet ain't missing right now, Matt. This Baptiste round has been sick. I guess you have an opinion on it now. I definitely do. Immortality Field, forget about it. Venom burns that down instantly. And Atlanta Rain are going to end the series here. They play with their food, it seems. But eventually, Atlanta Rain deliver that Southern hospitality to the Excelsior and deliver them a pretty staunch 3-0. to zero. Yeah, it really kind of obviously the scores 3-2, three, 3-2 two, three, two on the last two maps. A lot of it was dominated by the Atlanta Reign, though. Like, last second heroics times for New York, but uh, really, it's all Atlanta Reign here today. Yeah. Great map for Ultraviolet. Nine final blows, six deaths. Kai is 14 of those, and Venom 12. Great to see Venom be able to move over to the Hanzo and have pretty solid impact. Again, we talk about, okay, extra pressure on a soldier, and she doesn't feel great against either Widow or Hanzo and sort of, you know, outside of having rail all the time. But it's also that shield pressure, right? Make it a little bit harder for Kellen to continue to advance, Art to move forward here. Really impressive stuff from the Atlanta Reign. I would suggest that New York, um, on an individual level, continue to impress us. It's never been an issue for this team. Uh, but that's why it's all the more remarkable that they're currently sitting at, what, four and... 15, 4 and 16 yeah. now, this team. Right, we, we see the individual heroics at times, but like we talked about throughout the series, like those are just not 
good enough to get wins when you have teams in the league who can have those individual moments of success, but then also play really well and coordinate as a team. Uh, and when, when you try and press a little bit, make those plays, and I think it's probably tough now that you started off, uh, you know, as poorly as you did this season, because you're just trying to make up so much ground and feel like you have to make those plays. Uh, it's difficult when you play a team like the Atlanta Reign, who is just uh, so well positioned. Uh, you know, everybody knows what to do at the right times in terms of hero swaps positioning as well. It's uh, it's tough. New York team that present quite a conundrum for their coaches for sure and figuring out where to go from here. But let's yeah. talk about a player of the match, right? Someone who comes in here uh, and straight away has a huge impact on the game. Hawk starts the series, oh, excuse me, Venom starts the series on the Tracer, right? And it's really impressive. We've discussed a little bit about what an Arna Zen backline means for an enemy Tracer player. And although Gangnam Jin did a great job of, uh, you know, headlining a lot of these sort of fights in terms of first blows, Venom gets in there and really just wrecks them. And the Tracer, of course, on Kicks Row, pretty magical stuff. Yeah, I mean, he was always able to land those Pulse Bombs at team time and time after again. And it just no real help for the supports there for New York. Not a lot, not the ability to play the D.Va and have some of the peel that, you know, the luxury, you know, that Ultraviolet and Vigilante had. Uh, and you can see what happens when you don't play like that and you have a star Tracer on the other team. They're able to pop off and make a huge impact in the course of the game. Now, showing some flexibility, which is pretty important, I think, uh, at this level. So not just a, a Tracer specialist, but when he gets to play that Tracer, pretty impressive stuff. Now, his attach rate, unfortunately, uh, drops from 75% <laughs> after that first map here. Uh, but still getting a lot of value out of those Pulse Bomb kills and building them really quickly, about a minute and 15, a minute and five seconds at one point I saw for Venom. So that in and of itself, very impressive. Tracer is back. It's a great time for her. And it's a great time for those dedicated Tracer pilots like Venom. Atlanta, again, showing a lot of depth in their DPS roster, especially with Kai coming in in that last map to do what he does best, Matthew. And also seeing Venom being able to flex over and play some of the Hanzo, I think, uh, as he kind of grows his player and expands his hero pool, I think you're just going to see better things. Yeah, no doubt about it. Atlanta rain on the up and up. It is their time for New York. Back to the drawing board for the 11th time this season. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to head to the break. Uh, or we'll head to the truck for a break. And when we return, we've got more here on your Sunday of our first week of Countdown Cup qualifiers. Don't go anywhere. Hey, don't Have you done? Yet. No stair? Come through, come through. Breaking shield, breaking shield. 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 Breaking Nice. Peace. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Hello and welcome to Game Break, everybody. I'm here joined by Vigilante from Atlanta Rain coming off a great victory against the New York Excelsior. Vigilante, so I mean, I think this is my first time talking to you after you came into the Atlanta Rain and you guys have been looking really good. So I just want to hear from you. How has your time been on the Atlanta Rain so far? 자, 첫 번째 질문, 오늘 승리를 너무나 축하드리면서 어, 요즘 들어서 굉장히 상승세를 타고 있는 아틀란타라고 저는 생각을 합니다. 거기서 이제 좀 굉장히 중요한 파트를 맡고 있는 비즈란트 선수이신데 어, 아틀란타에 들어와서 제가 좀 인터뷰를 처음 하는 거라서 어, 개인적인 좀 어떻게 소감을 듣고 싶어요. 이번에 아틀란타에 들어오게 되면서 좀 어떠신 뭐 팀적 분위기나 뭐 이런 거다 좋으신가요? 아, 네. 외국, 외국이더라고 처음 재는 거기도 하고 영어 쓰는 팀이 처음이라 어려움이 좀 많았는데 애들이 되게 착하고 제가 적응을 잘할 수 있는 환경을 만들어줘서 잘하고 있는 것 같아요. Alright, I mean, this is my first time being in a mixed up, mixed roster, not only that, uh, sort of playing with uh, non-Korean players. So coming in, uh, it was sort of difficult, but all the teammates, all the coaching staff, everyone involved in the Atlanta Rain, they were super nice and they made a very safe and uh, sort of warm environment for me to really flourish uh, in this team. And I think I could really see that in uh, you know today's match as well. All of your teammates have been phenomenal and you as well. And I think I want to sort of talk about you and the, the synergy you and U, uh, UV, Ultraviolet, have. Because you guys you know haven't had a lot of time to play with uh, on stage, but now you guys, I, I definitely feel like you guys have that synergy going on so is there like a special training resume that you guys have uh, for the the support duo for the Atlanta Raid? 자, 두 번째 질문 방금 이제 말씀하신 것처럼 이렇게 외국 선수분들이랑 이렇게 보면은 어 되게 굉장히 시너지나 이런 팀워크가 굉장히 좋은 것 같아요. 어 특히나 이제 또 비즐란트 선수와 유비 선수 이제 또 우리 아틀란타 팀의 서포터 듀오가 굉장히 좀 좋은 시너지를 이루고 있다고 제가 제가 좀 생각을 하는데 어떻게 보면은 그렇게 기 오래된 시간 동안 같이 한게 아니라서 그럼에도 불구하고 이렇게 잘할 수 있는 이유가 좀 따로 있나요? 좀 이제 좀 이렇게 둘만의 좀 이렇게 특별한 뭐 이렇게 뭐 트레이닝이나 뭐 이런 게뭐 따로 있나요? 어, 저랑 울트라바이올렛이랑 처음에 플레이 스타일이 많이 달라서 애를 좀 먹었었는데 저랑 얘기를 엄청 많이 했어요 따로 개인적으로 그래서 저희 서로 플레이 스타일도 맞춰가고 서로의 마음도 이제 어느 정도 다 알고 있어서 그 덕이지 않을까 싶습니다. All right, so uh, of course, with the ultraviolet and me uh, coming in, I think it was a lot more difficult because our play styles were completely different. So that was one of the problems that we had to fix. So in order to fix that problem, what we did was we talked a lot. We communicated in and out of game, sort of wanted to mix uh, and sort of, uh, you know, level out our differences. And I think as of right now, both me and uh, UV, we sort of know how we feel, not only feel, and we sort of understand each other a lot more. All right, that is it for the interview. Vigilante, thank you so much for your time. And again, big congratulations on the win. 자, 이걸로 인터뷰 마치겠고요. 오늘 승리 너무나도 축하드리면서 보내드리도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. Atlanta coming off a great victory against the New York Excelsior 3-2-0. I mean, I think New York Excelsior on their defensive circuit well was amazing. Flora popped off, but it just wasn't enough for Atlanta Rain and Venom. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, and then there's a couple of storylines that come out of here. Atlanta Rain is the better team. We expected that coming into this series, and I think you start to see some of the cracks of the New York Excelsior. You know, we always talk about they have great players, and you can see that individually. They had great moments of being exceptional across the board, but I think overall, Atlanta Rain, the way that they coordinate their dives, the way that they work together, also just how they play a little bit differently with Hawk and Speedily in the lineup. Just New York Excelsior did not have a great answer to that. And you know, as you said, Flora could not do more on yeah. this King's Row to try and sort of get them across the line. You can see the, the pain and frustration as he almost uh, pushed them across the line on their own attack. But you know, it's, it's starting to get uh, a little bit more difficult because they don't have the flexibility on this New York Excelsior. They don't have enough players really to sort of like switch to if they need to. And Kellen doesn't really have that diversity that some of the other tanks do have in this stage. Yeah, I mean, you gotta give him credit. He picked up the Sigma and he had a pretty, you know, good attempt at the Sigma as well. I wouldn't say like he was a huge crutch or anything. Flora popped off, as you mentioned, like, and this is what we said going into the matchup. Flora needs to pop off in this matchup. The problem is, Flora was popping off, but so was Venom. So was yeah. Kai. Yeah. You know, so was Ultraviolet here in spawn yeah. getting a 3k, right? So it was just like too overwhelming. Like the Atlanta Rain, 
I, I think this is such an awesome squad of players. Like, really, because when you think about it, when you look at this roster, at least when they were playing Speedily and Venom, it's Hawk. He's the only veteran on that yeah. roster. Hawk's been around since 2019, I believe. It was his first season in the Overwatch League. Yeah. And then you got, what? Venom's a rookie, Speedily is a rookie, Ultraviolet is a rookie, Vigilante is a rookie. The Atlanta Reign franchise is set up for success for like the next two to three years. Yeah, they have an just... unbelievable roster. So much talent on this team. And like so many of them are rookies just coming into the league and now like getting, you know, some experience within the league. So I'm just so impressed by this Atlanta Reign team. Definitely. And I think this is a very good stage for the Atlanta Reign. They're already, what, up, up two games, yeah. right? Yeah, I will say, next matchup going to be their first true Ooh. test. Who are they going to up against? San Francisco Shock. They'd be the favorite. Okay. Honestly, oh, right now from what I look Okay, come on, come on now, come on now. Shock have only lost two matches, come I know. on now. Yeah. Look, I, you know, you might be like, oh, that's the real favorite. Come on now, it's the Shock. It's it not the Nuke Excelsior, it's the Shock. It's a bit of a step up. Yeah, and you know, the Shock yeah. after a week of practice as well, right? Like, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's always going to be a challenge. It's proper, proper guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Come definitely. On, I mean, we're definitely going to find out soon. But before that, our next match is Paris Eternal versus Dallas Fuel. Here All we right. go. 6.9% chance. Yeah. Yeah? I'm confident. Yeah, right. I'm, I, I'm happy with that number as well. Johnny, where are you at? Are you 1. happy with 17. the 1.17? 1. 1.17. 1. 1. 1.17. Okay, so it is... I'm just going to say, it's highly unlikely that Paris is going to win. So, but if, the they, if, yeah. they, if they want to have a chance, what do they have to do? Uh, <laughs> what I, I, this is why we get paid. Yeah, you know, to answer uh, these honestly, questions. I think it's it's come in and try and play your own game and make the Dallas feel uncomfortable. I don't think you're going to be able to just sort of come in and have the raw firepower that they do have on the Dallas Fuel, especially with how well Edison is playing these days. You know what to expect when the Dallas Fuel are coming out. They're going to want to put Harmon onto that Zarya. They could easily come out with some interesting strategies. For all we know, we could see Malthal move over to some Pharah, really sort of do something for hey. Harmon, force Harmon onto that Diva all of a sudden things start getting wonky they have a hard match up here you need to do something different if they want to get this one yeah you need to make Talos feel uncomfortable and that's really it and there are multiple ways you can do it you can make you know, a team uncomfortable by stepping up the tempo quite a bit where Dallas fuel goes like whoa they're so aggressive and like we have to play defensive and like we're not quite ready for the aggression the Paris Eternal is bringing or you could go the opposite way like we're playing some weird composition like Paris Eternal bring out Torbjorn or something look you gotta be situational with the it Torbjorn works for yeah. <laughs> situational <laughs> but that's what I'm saying like if you throw out a composition that Dallas fuel perhaps aren't ready for we saw that last stage against the Florida right. Mayhem right remember yeah. that match against Florida Mayhem Dallas Fuel are like whoa they're playing double flex support <laughs> in Jotes meta like hold up, hold up, this, right? <laughs> so that could be like an option for the Paris Eternal to make Dallas Fuel like second you know guess themselves and like try to overthink right. it a little bit and that could mean you get more of a neutral matchup with Dallas Fuel aren't calculated and they don't have anything planned out that scripted yeah. all right I mean we all set our sort of predictions and odds the percentage for this matchup let's I'm I'm curious to see what our casters think. And for this matchup, we have Matt and Mitch back. What do you guys think? What are your percentage? What are zero, your odds? Zero, 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 <laughs> zero. It it's can't zero, be zero, Danny. though. You have no, a degree, Mitch. My man. It can't see? be zero. My man. <laughs> there's always the a chance. Yeah, there's on, always there's a chance. Hard. That's true. Actually, so the tenets yeah. of quantum physics mm. also indicate that the ground could open up and swallow us all right now. There is like an infinitesimally small it chance could. that could happen. So I, I would say it's been a good run. If that's the case, Paris you know it's been a good run. Just, just <laughs> same. I would say like a, is... a 13, 13.4% chance. Wow. Whoa, that's whoa, a way you wow. Paris wow. wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? What is that based on? <laughs> what is that? Huh? What is that? What is the foundation for that number? Just they asked me to come up with a number, so I just came up with one. Uh, it it looks like Harris. That's statistics right behind. there, Matt. They You're didn't look. Around. They didn't look too bad the other day when we watched them. They looked all right. Uh, ah, yeah. now I, the Dallas Fuel is a little bit of a different team that Can they're we go going back to up against. To make you but... kick? Can we just go back to that? <laughs> well, what do you mean? I'm trying to just look. Like, Paris, Paris looked the best they looked ever, probably. Well. You know, maybe maybe they looked better when they had the players Did that they? were on Dallas no. now. But oh, you mean the element they, this is maybe, the best yeah. they've looked this season, though. <laughs> this is the best they've looked this season. Uh, where yeah. maybe they give them some trouble. You never know. I, love I would you, say it's higher than zero. <laughs> it's, 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 it's higher it's than zero. That's a great uh, maybe 13. Maybe 13.4 is a little high. Uh, but, you know, it falls you somewhere in between there. <laughs> 
No. I'm yeah, not going to change. Okay. Somewhere between okay. 0 and 13.4. Right, 13.4% <laughs> jump. Look, obviously, it's like the highest okay. you would give them, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's on the high end, right. We need to over right. Okay, Matt, look, I'll, fair enough. I, I asked for justification. I guess, you know, I, I shouldn't have expected too much different. Guys, it could be quick. I justified got, it. You guys, don't leave the truck. We might be back awful soon. So don't go too far, all right? Don't get too comfortable. We might need yeah, to call you back in in just a moment. All right, <laughs> Scott, he reckons 3-0 uh, uh, yeah, Paris victory. Look, why, look, okay, so... Look, we start this game, we're trying not to sell it. Well, you're, Matt's trying to sell a kipper to you. We're obviously trying to be pretty honest. This well, is definitely David versus Goliath territory right now. It is. It is. But the Paris Eternal played the best we've seen them play the other day. Yeah. Does that mean they're going to win? Absolutely not. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that's probably true. If I had to pick, I would take the Dallas Fuel in this game. But we, we have seen an improvement finally, I would say where we need to give the, the players some credit, right, with the situation that they've been dealt, that they're starting yep. to play better. Again, uh, a few things we really like from their last outing, right? Krawi brings out the Orisa and gets some decent value out of her, right? We know that she is exploitable to some degree. And I also thought that the back line here, Rack Attack, Lugmino, yeah. very, very solid uh, in that series earlier this week. And hey, you take a map, it's that's not a small thing. I think it's Dorado, right? Where they, they're able to exploit London's sort of quirky wrecking ball based composition. So it's clear that this team are capable of reading a situation and coming up from as well. with a response for it. That's something you should look for again in this series because Dallas, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to serve you up some sort of gimmick, right? You definitely want to no. challenge them on a fundamental basis. And that's a, a great goal for Paris to aspire to in this matchup, I think. Yeah, you think uh, with uh, Han Bin in uh, to the starting lineup, right, for the Dallas Fuel, uh, you're not going to see, like, Wrecking Ball type kind of compositions. You're probably going to see, like, Diva, you know, Junker Queen, maybe even some Marisa, right? Uh, Zarya-based stuff. Uh, where I think that'll be kind of difficult here for the Paris Eternal is, you know, you are able to kind of capitalize on some of the compositions that maybe London played. I don't think you're going to get those same compositions here today against Dallas. Uh, how do you play in the head-to-heads? Yeah, a great question. I also think that, you know, Hanbin is the kind of player, uh, tank player that we've seen prefer to try and make the Zaya compositions work, right? This is the kind of team that... You know, played like Genji, Reaper, Zaya quite often when they when they sort of could. And it's like maps like Route 66, they're really good on. Defensively, these guys are really good. Their matchup against uh, the Justice was typically close because it always seems to be between uh, between those two teams. Uh, we didn't get to see a lot of the maps, right? I think both of our payload-based maps, it was one checkpoint to zero with the final score. So Dallas, they attacked, they, they had some issues. But when it came to defense, they were definitely better. So Paris have to test them here. Malthal, I think, is the kind of player that's definitely going to have a lot on his plate trying to deal with this, yeah. this field of Chio set up here. He has to step up in this series. He struggled at times to, to really uh, tax the support line's attention span enough to reduce their efficiency uh, or effectiveness in Paris's last game. So keep an eye on that one because uh, that's definitely a key to victory for the Eternal. Get Mouthful firing. Yeah, and the first map in the set will be Nepal as you kind of look through, right? Circuit Royale uh, should be good here for the Dallas U with Hanpin being able to play that Sigma at such a high level. I think if you're Paris, like how do you steal one of these early maps, right? One of the first two to kind of get you that Coliseo, which is a little bit of a toss up at times. And that's probably your path to victory of the series, right? Because I think you get the circuit, right? I think that's where you can see probably the best version of the fuel. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's where we get to at least see some of the, the elements of that team that become a little bit harder to counter, I suspect. Remember the Paris versus London matchup. Uh, we did see Ilios in the first match, and Nepal this time around. Paris had a slower start in that series, if you recall, but they were able to build up to find some strength. So, Krawi hovering the Orisa already, and uh, the Eternal getting acquainted with the fuel in more ways than one, apparently. It's, uh, Paris looks, uh, let's see what they come out and play here. Is you know, They'll have, right now, it looks like a... Uh, Okay, so a Zarya set up here. They'll not have the tour, but it'll be uh, Zarya with the Brig and the Ana as the Dallas Fuel. Oh, they'll play. Yeah, they'll play the Zarya as well. They want to get aggressive here with the Lucio and the Reaper. 340 charge there for Han Bin. Looks like the Eternal are ready for this. They got the Zarya comp of their own. Wub hacked here as Doha makes his presence felt briefly. Rack Han Bin at 27 really and counting. Yeah, big wide grenade there as well. Dallas want to push in. They're not showing any respect. And Edison gets punished as a result. Wub is able to find that headshot. 
4v4 right now, and Paris will be getting the capture of the point. Hanbin a little bit out at sea right now. Is he could be in a bit of danger? Yeah, he's chased down. That's what we want to see from Malthal. He gets rid of Hanbin. Yes, he thought that they could actually play really aggressive there, uh, the Dallas Fuel. And when they walk up and they're trying to make a play for Rack Attack, it's a, you know, a biotic grenade that Fielder hits. They're trying to capitalize. They're not able to get in there fast enough. Wob hits a headshot there on Edison, takes him out. And you have the Paris Eternal in control of the point. Great start for Paris. At exactly what they wanted. And, and Wob just really keeping a cool head despite Dallas being the ones that were applying pressure. Gold star for that one. Han been pretty close to that grab already after that first fight. Krawi not too far behind either. Mouthful harassing. Fielder doesn't have a brig. It's actually a uh, Lucio there for Chio, so a little bit harder to deal with the Tracer. And oh, what a sleep. Yeah, Mouthful gonna have to wait this one out as Chio gets his hands dirty. Han down to one again. Slightly flimsy in the front line. Uh, the fuel as Krawi is anything but. He gets a nano boost now, is looking to push Chio away. Dallas again, struggling to really shift the Eternal. Yeah, and I'm not sure you have the staying power here to be able to take the point. It looks like one player is on here. It looks like it's Chio. Just trying to maybe dr draw some players down. And Wob goes down there, kind of puts some pressure. And now Chio's back. Is Paris able to hold on yet again? Yeah, Wob hack there, I think, for a moment. Eventually got picked off. But Krawi gets rid of Fielder. Chio not quite in big territory, but his aggression carries him into the back line. He deals with Lucmino, and now it's a rally from Rack Attack. Edison knows, yeah, Briggs just around the corner, but Paris are doing well. They're hard to shift. Dallas need to make the move. They need to respect this opponent. Yeah, and Crawley is so charged up. They're trying to do everything they can to keep him alive. That's the sound barrier used by Chio. Now they push in. They give up a ton of percentage, though, to the Paris Eternal. Yeah, 90 and counting. Really a very, very good start for Paris. What's tough for them in that fight is that they use, obviously, both of those support ultimates. They go through the grab there, don't get much out of it. Very much, though, this round is theirs to lose. The Eternal. Gotta watch out for this Death Blossom now, right? Maybe like a Biotic Grenade comes in from Fielder here early and you're able to capitalize it. Yeah, as Edison, he's hide. Sneaky Beaky. Is he going with the bubble here? Trying to plow through Rack Attack. Here's the Death Blossom. It's good. Luke Mino's down and even Crowley gets picked up there. Dallas, for the cost of one ultimate, they get an entire fight win. And now they have a stagger on Malthal. Uh, that is a full team wipe. So now you start to look at what, what do we got left here, right? Uh, if you're the Paris Eternal, you're building up towards this nano. You nanoed Crawley the last time. Uh, able to just live a little bit through some of the Dallas Fuel onslaught. For Dallas, I think you're looking at like a big grab here at the choke. A grab plus like a biotic grenade to kill a player or two. Dallas need to be squeaky clean for the rest of the round now. Leno Edison's there, hiding around the corner. He gets spotted. And Malthul! That's an environmental! Chio, another kill from him. Doing a lot of work. Quick shield bash away from Rack Attack here. Crowley gets nano, but he's going to get caught inside the grab. Oh, this is going wrong for Paris now. How do they hang on? Edison overextends into Rack Attack. But Harmin is charging and charged up. Yeah, as they want to get in and finish off some of these kills. Oh, the long range there on the Rack Attack. So, you know, Chio's 6-1 now. Yeah, as he's he's done a nice job in terms of just being an aggressor, just being able to take out Malta like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Is now you're having to push in here for the final attempt to me before the Paris Eternal is all oh, what gets really Dangerous. low. It's an EMP here, Matt. From bad to worse now for the Paris Eternal. Yeah, they got their support ultimates for how much longer? That's the EMP and they explode as Edison dives into the back line. Comes out and the judges give a perfect 10 because the fuel salvage a slow start into a dominant round win. It's a really good start, though, from the Paris Eternal. Like, all things considered, even with a round loss, they still looked pretty good all throughout. Once they gave up control of the point, though, they were never able to get back. And to be fair, I think this is what the first time we've really seen Paris go for this Zaya composition. Wub looked excellent uh, early on in the round. It's tough to deal with Dallas, though. Again, they're very good at rationing those ultimates. I think winning that last fight with just the death loss, or the second to last one, right? That really hurts. Means that the Dallas will constantly have great economy. Oh, she go there for a pulse bomb. Yeah, just gets him with a right boot. click. Fielder stays alive. Pulse goes wide. It wasn't environmental, but Chio with seven final blows and one death, leading his team. Chio has as many final blows as the Paris Eternal. I mean, not surprised with the way he's playing here early. Is, well, uh, he's, he's, uh, so they, he's freaky. They'll ditch the Sojourn, which uh, is quite interesting because they kind of. 
I, I thought the Sojourn was pretty effective at times, right? Like, that's how they get the point to begin with, where uh, Wub actually able to get a kill onto Edison, oh. but maybe they feel like the Sombra's a little bit strong with hacks. They forced Krawi's second bubble there with a hack. Off cooldown now, but that gets broken, he's dead. Yeah, great job by Paris there. They just tax the defensive resources of Krawi, and guess what Edison has found? Okay, I like that from Luke Mino. I see you there. Over the head of the Reaper. Doesn't hit the sleep, though. So now, now they're just putting the pressure on. I actually thought Sting with the, the Sojourn a little bit gives them a little bit more consistent damage. Would have made it a little bit easier, maybe. But yeah, like you mentioned, Dallas forces out both of those bubbles from Krali and then just capitalize right away by 